for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot with day two of Madden 24 ratings. Today, it's all defensive line, edge rushers, uh, the big boys on defense. Got another really good uh, series of lists here. I got some extra pictures today, too. I got some of their individual ratings, like their strengths and block sheds and stuff like that. Things that are important when it comes to defensive line. Uh, but as always, if you guys want to continue this series, make sure to be a subscriber. Like button, let me know in the comment section as I plan on doing videos about this all week as these Woo! ratings drop to give you guys my reaction and my take on some of these ratings. Now, we're going to start off with defensive linemen. I got 20 to 11 on the board right now. I don't typically have a lot of strong takes when it comes to um, these type of players, the 20 to 11. I typically save those for the top 10. But there's a couple of guys here that should definitely, in my opinion, be a little bit rated, a little bit higher. Guys like Javon Hargrave, who had, I think he had the most sacks of any defensive tackle in the league last year with 11. He's only a, a 84. Obviously, I'm an Eagles fan. I keep bringing that up. But having 11 sacks, and the year before that, he was a Pro Bowler too. So to me, he should be probably rated a little bit higher. So going into the top 10 defensive linemen, this list really shouldn't um, you know surprise too many people who's at the top. When you get to the top of this list, we have Aaron Donald as a 99 overall again. I think it's like his seventh straight year of being a 99 overall, even though his stats don't necessarily uh, compare to years past. And that's going to be one of my themes of this video. Not necessarily when it comes to defensive line, but when it comes to edge rushers, is that it seems to have a lot of guys that are just keeping their rating based off of reputation or name alone. Uh, Aaron Donald... Not saying he's not, you know, maybe he's still a 9 on overall player, but he is getting up there in age a little bit, and last year he only had five sacks, which isn't really, uh, I know he only played 11 games, he missed six games, but five sacks in 11 games when you're talking about a guy that used to get 20 in 16 games, I mean, you know, he's fall, he, he's falling off a little bit. I don't, I don't know, you know, obviously he's getting a lot of double teams in, 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 uh, in L.A. because they have nothing else on that team. But he's been going through double teams his entire career, so it's really hard to say. But, I mean, I know Aaron Donald's a great player. I'm not trying to put him down, but I'm just saying, based off of last year's production, wouldn't have surprised him if he dropped a point to a 98. That probably would have been a much bigger story, and I think the EA is probably afraid to give Aaron Donald anything less than a 99 at this point. Uh, all the other guys in here are fine. I think Jeffrey Simmons could be rated a little bit higher, though. I mean, he's an 89 overall. I wouldn't have a problem with him being a 90 and 91, uh, but everything else is pretty good as far as the, the order. Now we get to the edge rushers, and this is, like I said, this is where I kind of, you know, there's areas where I have more issues. Um, pass rushers from the edge are typically a little bit more of a high profile position. Maybe that's why I take, um, you know, take it the way that I'm taking it. But either way, doing 11 to 20, I don't really have too many issues here. I think um, Brian Burns could be a little bit higher. Rashawn Gary could be a little bit higher rated. But overall, I got no real issue with the actual, uh, I mean, Josh Sweat. And once again, I always call this out as an Eagles fan. But Josh Sweat last year, he had like 11 and a half sacks. He had a Pro Bowl year the year before that. He didn't even go to the Pro Bowl last year. But last year, I mean, he, he aside from sacks, he also had that insanely athletic pick six against the Cowboys. I mean, to me, he, he should have gone up from an 84. He should be a little bit higher. But when you got guys like Trey Hendrickson, who's also a really great player, he's only rocking an 87. It's hard to complain. So let's go ahead and let's get to the top 10 because the top 10 is really, like I said, I try to save... Um, you know, this this is this is a little bit of a different territory, and I try to save uh, my complaints for the top 10. So starting off with the top 10, there's no 99 overall here. Nick Bosa coming in at a 98. Miles Garrett coming in at a 98, although I think Miles Garrett at some point was a 99. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't I don't know why I fell back. And then Mika Parsons at a 97, which I feel, um, you know, when you got guys like TJ Watt, who had 22 and a half sacks not too long ago, not last year, but the year before that, and he's only coming in at 94, it's hard to understand how Mika Parsons just jumps right over him to a 97. And I don't want to keep coming on these lists and defending guys like TJ Watt or like typically it sounds like I'm defending Steelers players all the time because yesterday was Minka Fitzpatrick but TJ Watt never really got the ratings that he deserves and then Minka Fitzpatrick just went straight past him now I know you know I think part of that is because TJ Watt isn't really great in coverage um, you know, and that's this is an outside linebacker, so maybe that's why Mika Parsons is a little bit higher rated because he's probably better in things like coverage and playing actual linebacker than TJ Watt. But still, as an edge rusher, I don't understand how TJ Watt doesn't get more respect. Von Miller, the same way. I mean, this guy's a legend and he's still playing at a very high level. I don't know how Mika, Mika Parsons jumps right past those guys. 
But still, obviously, he's a really good player. Uh, then you got Max Crosby to 94. And then we got some more guys that are really just like there because of name, like Joey Bosa, who didn't play much last year but also didn't have too great of a year. He's a 91, and he's ahead of guys who had better years last year, like Hassan Reddick, who had 16 sacks in the regular season and a couple more in the playoffs, including one that really changed the season for the Niners uh, by hurting Brock Purdy in the NFC Championship game. He's only rocking a 90, uh, even though he was, to me, he's playing at a top five defensive level last year. Then you got guys like Matthew Judon as well, at 15 and a half sacks. The last two years, Matthew Judon has been flirting with the league lead. And Saxon has been one of the most productive players, has been, been, you know, on par with defensive player of the year type players. And he's only rated at an 89, which is actually an upgrade because he was an 85 last year in Madden. So he makes the top 10. But, you know, got, like I said, to me, those both of those guys should be ahead of Joey Bosa. And then you have DeMarcus Lawrence, too, who never really puts up great sack numbers. He's a great player. But I think that uh, Judon should be ahead of Mar DeMarcus Lawrence as well. So, you know, there, there's definitely some some small issues here. Uh, I just don't, uh, you know, I, I, Cowboys players tend to get higher ratings than they might deserve sometimes. Guys like Mika Parsons and, and DeMarcus Lawrence, uh, especially in Madden, because it seems like every year, and they'll probably be like the highest rated team this year in Madden, because that's just how Madden does every year it's like they, they overrate the cowboys and then they fail to uh they disappoint as the season goes on but uh but you know i mean like i said i can't really be too mad because mika parsons is a star player i just feel like he should probably be like a 95 instead of like a 97 or something like that but you know these are all somewhat small complaints and that's typical when you're talking about ratings points they're not like way off but there's definitely a couple of areas where they could change and it would probably be a little more accurate to last year's production or recent year's production. Because guys like Hassan Reddick, he's had like 12 sacks the last three years. Matthew Judon, like I mentioned, he had 12 and a half last year, 15 and a half the, the year after that. I think he's had like a four-time straight pro bowler, or like a five-time straight pro bowler. So I don't understand why it's taking some of these guys so long to get the, the ratings that they deserve. But I think these guys will probably continue to prove EA wrong in the upcoming season anyway. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more, like I said, I plan on doing this all week. So make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and I'll make sure to, to keep coming uh, with these lists and these reactions. Other than that, thanks for watching. Memo Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below.